You need to make changes to your C-sharp application, but the code that you need to update is used all over the place in the app, and you don't really know what could break if you make a mistake. This is where unit testing comes in. With a good suite of unit tests, you can make changes with confidence, knowing that if you break something, you're going to know about it right away. In this tutorial, you will write unit tests for your C-sharp code so that you can catch bugs early, refactor with confidence, and get the job done faster. Let's get started. Most modern applications involve multiple components that go way beyond the user interface. For instance, this matchmaking gaming application could not provide any of its core functionalities if it was not for its powerful backend. This backend includes the REST API that allows the app to place the matchmaking requests and ultimately join players into game matches. This REST API in turn collaborates with other services like the Game Manager here, which is the one in charge of provisioning the game servers where users will play. As many APIs do, this API also relies on a database to safely store all the information related to the game matches. But if we look deeper into the matchmaker, we'll see that there are multiple components inside that group the different functionalities of the API. Things like controllers, entities, repositories, and even the game matcher, which is the core component responsible for the matchmaking algorithm. Lastly, if we look into the game matcher component, we'll see that it provides multiple functions that allow callers to make use of its features. In testing terms, these functions are called units, since they are the smallest testable part of the component. So, when verifying the behavior of an application, developers usually start by creating unit tests, which will make sure these units work properly in isolation. Later, they will develop what is known as integration tests, which in this case could test that the entire Matchmaker REST API works properly when it combines its multiple components with external services like the Game Manager and the database. Finally, either the developers or a dedicated test team will create end-to-end -end tests to verify that the entire application works properly from an end-user perspective. As you can see, there are different types of tests that you can use to verify the behavior of your application using different scopes. Unit tests, which are meant to verify small pieces of code in isolation. Since these tests are isolated from any external services or processes, they can run very fast. Integration tests, which verify the interactions between the different units of the application. These tests are meant to complement unit tests since they will integrate any out-of-process dependencies like databases, the file system, or external services reachable via the network, giving you a higher level of confidence on the functionality of the app. And end-to-end -end tests, which verify the application from start to finish and with a focus on making sure the application works properly from the perspective of the end user. There are also many other types of tests that can verify several other aspects of the application, like performance tests, security tests, smoke tests, acceptance tests, load tests, usability tests, and many others. In this course, we will focus on the essential unit testing techniques that you must know in order to quickly catch any regressions on the core functionality of your C-sharp applications. Unit testing is a software testing technique where individual units of an application are tested in isolation to ensure that they function correctly. The primary goal of unit testing is to validate that each unit of the software performs as designed. Let's see how this works with a small scenario. Let's say the unit we want to test is the increase experience method of our experience service class. This method should increase the experience points of the specified character in our gaming application. To test it, we create the increase experience unit test, which is just a small program that will run the following verification steps. First, it sets the initial experience points on the character. Then, it creates an instance of the experience service class and it calls its increase experience method. When increase experience returns, the test collects the results it produces, if any. And finally, the test verifies that the character experience points did increase. So, from here on, we have a quick way to verify that the increased experience method is working as expected. And by quick, I mean milliseconds, which is the speed at which most current machines will be able to run this test. What does it mean to isolate units from external dependencies? Well, imagine that our experience service class makes use of a few methods in this other repository class. The increase experience method invokes getCharacter to load the character that will receive the experience points and then invokes saveCharacter to persist the updated character. The problem is that this repository class loads and saves data into an external database. So, when our unit test invokes the increase experience method, it will end up making a few round trips to the database, which is slow and unreliable. 
We don't want slow nor unreliable tests. So what we do in this case is add a new step to our test where we replace the repository class being used by Experience Service with a fake repository. This fake repository still has the required get character and save character methods, but instead of interacting with a database, those methods will just simulate what the real methods do. For instance, get character could return a fake instance of the character with some preconfigured values. By doing this, your test will keep running fast, which is essential to get with feedback on regressions. They will prevent them from failing due to external issues like network errors, and you also avoid having to perform complex setup of the environment needed for the dependency, like having to prepare a database with the right data for the test. What is a unit testing framework? In simple terms, it is a software tool that provides an environment for developers to create, run, and report unit tests. A unit testing framework typically offers features like test discovery, assertion capabilities, test organization, and results reporting. There are many existing unit testing frameworks that you can use to test your C-sharp applications, but here are the three most popular ones. MS-Test, which stands for Microsoft Test Framework, is the original test framework built into Visual Studio and that became open source starting with its second version. NUnit, a widely used unit testing framework for .NET, which originated as a port of the popular Java testing framework JUnit. And XUnit, a modern, extensible, and more opinionated unit testing framework for the .NET ecosystem written by the original inventor of NUnit v2. You can use any of these frameworks for all your unit testing needs, since they are all very mature and include all the features you will ever need. However, in this course, we'll be using XUnit for the following reasons. It allows you to create cleaner and more intuitive tests, since they require less test-specific attributes to get started, while mostly relying on standard C-sharp language features that most devs already understand. It is designed to run tests that live in the same assembly in parallel. It does this by default, which is essential due to the expected fast execution of unit tests. Finally, it is a test framework used in many .NET-based projects started and maintained by Microsoft itself, like ASP.NET Core, Entity Framework, the .NET Runtime, and several others. Let's see now how to configure Visual Studio Code to be able to work with C-sharp unit tests. So here I am in a pretty vanilla installation of Visual Studio Code, and really the only thing that you're going to need in order to start working with unit tests, C-sharp unit tests, is to install just one extension. So what you can do is just go into the extensions view over here, so just click in the extensions view, and what you want to do is just look for C-sharp dev kit. Okay, should be the first here over here. It is an extension provided by Microsoft, C-sharp dev kit. And this is the extension that allows you to not just work with C-sharp in Visual Studio Code, but also it has a bunch of enhancements to the Visual Studio Code experience so you can more easily work with your C-sharp projects in VS Code. But more important than that, and if we scroll down into the features that this uh, provides, you're going to notice the following. As you can see here, this enables testing, right? So with this extension, you can discover, run, and debug unit tests directly inside Visual Studio Code, which is exactly what we want to do. So what you want to do is just go ahead and install this extension. So I'm installing it now. It may take a few seconds because it not just installs the dev kit, it also installs two or three more extensions. Uh, so that could take a few seconds, but regardless, it is a pretty fast process. So the extension has been installed. If we just close this and we clear this, you're going to see that now we have, and let me collapse this, we have a few installed extensions. So we have the C-sharp dev kit, but now we also have the C-sharp extension provided by Microsoft, which is the base language support uh, for C-sharp in VS Code. Uh, we also got the IntelliCode for C-sharp dev kit, which is going to provide AI assistance as you write your C-sharp code in VS Code. And we also have the .NET Runtime install tool, which is used by a few extensions to be able to actually run the runtime so that it can be used by these extensions, right? So yeah, that's pretty much it uh, to get code ready to start writing unit tests. And just one more thing that I'll notice that I want to point out here is that I have enabled one feature of VS Code right here in file. Let me scroll down a bit. Over here, auto save. Okay, auto save. I have enabled this feature so that as I write code, it will be automatically saved in my environment, right? So you may or may not want to enable that, but this is what I'll be using across this course. It's time to write our first C-sharp unit test. But of course, before we can test anything, we need something to test, right? So because of that, I have attached a zip file that includes a bunch of C-sharp classes that are going to be the target of our test. I already downloaded and extracted the file in a location in my box. So I'm going to go into file open folder and I'm going to just go into my directory over here in the projects unit testing. I extracted that zip file right here. It's called game library. So I'm going to go into that directory and I'm going to select folder. 
Okay, so it's going to open the folder in Visual Studio Code. And since I have installed the C Sharp Dev Kit, what you're going to notice is that you're going to see two sections in your Explorer view on the left side. Let's start with the first one. On the top, you're going to see, and let me collapse this for a moment. Okay, on the top, it is the standard Explorer view. So this view over here, over here, which just shows the files that are included in the folder that you just opened, right? And as you can see, we have multiple files over here, which are just a bunch of classes that we're going to be using for unit tests. We also have the project file over here, and we have a solution file and a few directories for the binaries that are being produced, right? But since we have, like I said, since we have the dev kit, we also have the solution explorer over here. So let me collapse this and expand this. This one here is kind of a virtual view of your file and projects that is going to become quite handy in order for us to be able to create new files, create projects, add references between projects, and a few of these trivial tasks that you want to be doing all the time, right? So we're going to be spending a bunch of time in this Solution Explorer as we go across this course. And so the class that we want to be unit testing for this uh, specific lesson is going to be this one called Treasure Chest, right down here, Treasure Chest. Let me expand this a little bit. And so this is a very simple class that all it does is that it has, besides a constructor, it has a property here, it's called is locked, with the idea that this de determines if the chest, the chest is locked or not. And we, then we have one method here, can open. That is a method that can tell us whoever calls this method can open the chest depending on if the person has the key, right? So the Boolean over here has the key. So let me scroll down a little bit here. Basically, if the chest is locked and the caller does not have the key, then we return false because we cannot open the chest. And otherwise, regardless of if the caller has a key or not, we know that the chest is not locked and therefore we can return true, right? The chest can be opened. That's pretty much it about this class. And now we have to determine, so what is going to be the unit that we want to test? And that unit is going to be whichever piece of code or whichever function here represents the minimum amount of functionality that this class exposes to the callers, right? To the external world. And that minimum amount of functionality here is going to be our can open method, right? So this is the unit that we want to test, that we want to verify that works properly for every single case, right? And so in order to create that unit test, what you're going to need is test project. The test project is what that contains all of your unit tests. So in Visual Studio Code, in order to create one of these test projects, what you can do is the following. So there are actually a couple of ways. First way is going to be via the .NET CLI. What you can do is just do Control J to open your terminal, at least on Windows. And if you just do dir here, you're going to see that we are at the very root, right? Where we have the game library directory and the solution file, right? So I'm going to just clear this. And what you're going to do is just do .NET new list. And by doing this, you're going to get the full list of all the different types of projects that you can create with the .NET CLI, as you can see right here, a bunch of types of projects. But since, as we said in a previous lesson, we're going to be doing X unit across this course, right? So you're going to see that right here at the bottom, there is the X unit project template. So you can use that template to go ahead and create your X unit test project. To do that, all you have to do is just say .NET new X unit, and then the name of a project would be game library because our project that we're going to be testing is named game library and you can just append that unit test because it's going to include all of our unit tests, right? That would be the way that you can create this via the .NET CLI. But there's also another way that we can do this since we are using the C Sharp Dev Kit. And so let me just go ahead and collapse this a little bit. Let me just close this terminal. And what we want to do now is just open our Explorer once again. What you can do is just go into the game library solution, top node over here, right click, you can do new project. And here you can go ahead and select among all of these projects uh, you can see. So the one that we want to use is the last one over here is called X unit test project, or you can just type X unit. So X unit test project, click on that one. And like I said, the name will be game library dot unit tests. And so hit enter, we can click on default directory. That will be fine. And now we have our brand new unit test project right here. It is uh, ready for us to start creating unit tests right there. If we expand this, you're going to see that we already have one unit test class here called unit test one that we're not going to actually use. So we're going to just right click on that one, delete, right? So just delete that one. It's gone because we're going to be creating our own one. But before we create our unit test class, we're going to one thing that we're going to need is a reference from the unit test project into our actual game library so that the unit test can use the classes that are in the game library. So what you can do is just right click on game library that unit tests, click on add project reference, 
and then select the only project here which is going to be the game library and that's going to set up the relationship between your test project and your actual game library so if you click over here in the unit test you're going to see that reference has been set over here we have the project reference we can test any of the classes inside our class library now so going back into our unit test project what we want to do now is to create the unit test class so for that what you can do is just right click on game library unit tests add new file we're going to select class and then we need to choose a name for our test class right and here the convention is to basically name your test class using the as a prefix the name of the actual class that we're going to be testing since we're going to be testing our treasure chest class we're going to be naming this one treasure chest tests hit enter and that's going to go ahead and create our test class so let's keep this open and also let's open our treasure chest on the right side open both of them right there and let's collapse this so we can see better so let's quickly remember what is that we're going to be testing so we're going to be testing our can open method in our treasure chest what we're going to do is going back into our treasure chest class is to define the method that's going to run our test so this method is going to be named public void and since we come we want to test the can open method let's just call it can open test and of course you may be wondering if this is the right name for this unit test but don't worry too much about that because we're going to be talking a lot about proper unit test naming and the structure of the unit test all these things later on for now i just want to show you what is the quickest way to go ahead and come up with a unit test for that specific method right we're going to be improving on this later on now in order to turn this method into an actual unit test you have to remember to add the following attribute the name is just fact and this turns the method into an actual unit test meaning that this test here which is known as a fact so this fact should always be true right as a fact it has to be true all the time right it has to pass and then perhaps to see better we can send this treasure chest into, into the right side so let me the editor here so we can see the class on the right side so yeah that should help us there you go can open on the right side so the first thing to do in our unit test is to arrange the scenario, right? So we want to test the can open method, but before we can do that, we need to have an instance of the treasure chest class. So let's go ahead and prepare the scenario by creating an instance of the class. So var chest equals new treasure chest. And then we're going to be passing in a parameter that specifies if the chest is locked or not, right? In this case, let's say true. So the chest is going to be locked. Now that we have arranged the scenario, we can go ahead and perform the action, right? The actual test. So in this case, that's going to be invoking the can open method. So all we want to do is say just chest that can open. And then here we have to pass in the has key parameter. So in this case, let's say it's going to be true. So the color has the key. But of course, before we can verify that this actually works, we need to collect the result of it. So let's go ahead and, and collect result on the left side. So this is going to be the result of the invocation, right? Finally, what we want to do is to assert that our expectation is fulfilled. So in this case, since we have created the treasure chest class with a true value, which means that the chest is locked and we have passed in true into can open here, meaning that the person or the invoker has the key, it should be the case that we return true, right? We should be able to open the chest. So for that, we can do the following, assert that true, and then here comes the result, all right? So we are asserting that the result is true which is what we were expecting. So that covers the basics of how to write a unit test. As you can see, first thing is to arrange the scenario. The next thing is to act on the unit under test. And finally, we want to assert that our expectation is fulfilled. So now that we have our unit test, the next thing is going to be to run it and verify that it actually passes. So let's see now how to go ahead and run our unit test. And the first thing that you want to do here is to actually build your test project so that it can discover this brand new test that has been added. So in order to build the project, you can do it in a few ways. So you can just do Control Shift B in your keyboard. That will go ahead and just build the entire solution. All right, as you can see, it is building it. All done. I'm going to close this. After doing that, what you're going to notice is that we have this little play button over here, which means that we are able to go ahead and run that test, right? It has been discovered. But before we actually run the test, let me show you another way to build your project if you wanted to. By the way, let me close this for a moment so we can see better and let me open my Explorer. The other way to build your test project, if I just right click in it on the, on the Solution Explorer, so you just right click, you can do build and that will go ahead and build that test project. Now, in order to run the test, there are a few ways, like I mentioned. So the first way that I want to show you is actually via the terminal. So if you just open the terminal once again, and then we switch, and let's see, we switch into game library that unit tests. 
what you can do is just use the .NET CLI. So pretty much .NET test, hit enter, and that's going to go ahead and run all of the tests in that one test project. And as you can see, our test run succeeded, right? And it actually took less than one millisecond. Right? So it was super fast as expected of unit tests. Yeah, so that's one way to go ahead and run your unit tests, but there are more ways. So another way to do this, if I just close this, is by using the test view that is included with the C Sharp Dev Kit. So if we go over here, so no, notice this test icon on the left side right there. So if you click on that one, you're going to see this view here, which is going to show all of the unit tests that are loaded in the Solution Explorer. So this is going to start with the name of your assembly or your project. And then this is going to be your namespace or the namespace where you have the unit tests. And then the next level is going to be the name of the actual test class. And under that one, you're going to see if we expand a little bit more, the actual unit test that you're going to be executing. So here you can run the test at any of the levels that you want that you want to execute here. Or if you just want to run all the tests, you can just right click at the very top. You hit right click or just click here in the play button. And that's going to go ahead and run your unit test. Okay, as you can see, it is building the project, it is running and, and yeah, it is already done. So with that, we have verified that in this case, well, it's just one, one unit test, but really all the tests in our test project have succeeded, right? And it was super fast just as before. Okay, so this view is going to become much handy as we have more and more unit tests that we want to verify as we make changes into our code. So that's the second way to do this. And then the last way that I can show you that you can do it is by just running the test directly from the test file. For doing that, let me just clear the results for a second. So in these three dots, if you click over here and you say clear all results, you're going to go back into the initial state where we don't have any results, right? What you can do now is just use this play button over here. It's going to show up next to each of your unit tests and you can use it to run, of course, that test. So you can just click there and that's going to, once again, spin up the test process to go ahead and run your test. And once again, you can see your results on the left side, but there's also another way to see your results. If you click over here where it says test results in your terminal, you can click there and that's going to show you, once again, the results of your test run that, that you just performed. So I guess there's even one more way to run this test, right? And so that other way is by just right-clicking. So anywhere in this test file, you can just right-click and you can go ahead and say either run test at cursor, run test in the current file, and then we'll take, take a look at debugging in the next lesson. But you can use either of these options to just run the one test that is right there in context or just all the tests. So in this case, I'm going to say run test at cursor, and that's going to go ahead. And as you can see, it is running that one can open test right there. And once again, we got a successful result. Debugging C Sharp unit test is very similar to how you would debug any other kind of C Sharp application. So in this case, what I want to do is just place a breakpoint in the first line of my unit test, so right here. And then via the debugging session, we're going to be going step by step into each of the things that are happening both in the unit test and also inside the treasure chest class. And to start the debugging session, all you have to do is just right click somewhere in the test. So I'm going to just right click here and then scroll down in this uh, set of options. And we're going to choose the one that says debug test at cursor, right? So we debug this one test. So click on that and that's going to go ahead and start our debugging session. So the debugging session has started. So let me accommodate things a little bit here so that we can see better. Let me actually collapse this. And so here we are at the very start of the test. And so what we want to do now is perhaps go inside the constructor of treasure chest. So I'm just going to do step into over here, and then I'll just do stop over right there. And as you can see, we are receiving the true value of is locked. So we're going to be setting the value of true over here is log is true now. And you can also see the values on the left side over here in the variables. You can see the values that we're we are using in this test session. Let's step over, okay? And then we can keep going. And we are going to do the invocation into the can open method. So I'll go into step into F11. As you can see, we're going in there. So is log is true, has key, has true. And then if we keep going, we're going to see that it evaluates into that condition evaluates into false, meaning that the chest can be actually open. We're going to be returning true, right? And so back in the test, the result was true. And you can also see that on the left side. And then finally, we're going to assert that, well, true is true, which should uh, succeed. And we are going to just click continue to complete our debugging session. But yeah, that's how you can do debugging. And the other way would be by going into our testing view you can always just pick the test that you want to debug and you see there's a debug icon right there. So you can click on that one and you're going to go through the exact same process of debugging your one unit test.
All right. So in this case, I'm just going to play to complete the test and we are done here. So that's how you can go ahead and debug your C sharp unit test in VS Code. And since you may be using a different code editor like Visual Studio in your case, what I want to do in the next lesson is to actually switch to Visual Studio momentarily to show you how you can create, run, and debug your unit tests also in Visual Studio. So before opening Visual Studio, I just want to show you what components I have enabled in my Visual Studio instance so that you understand what exactly is needed to run unit tests. So in this case, I'll be using Visual Studio Community 2022, which has everything you need. And I'm just going to click on modify very quickly here just to show you what I have enabled in my installation. So as you can see here, all I have enabled is the ASP.NET and Web Development workload. That's really all you need. That's going to include really every single unit testing feature that we're going to be using in this course. So let me just close this. And now I'm going to go ahead and launch my Visual Studio. All right, so what I'm going to do is just open project or solution. And I'm going to be op opening the same solution that we've been working on so far is gamelibrary.sln. So I'm going to open that. So here we are. As you can see here, we have our treasure chess class that we've been working with. What I want to show you is how you will go ahead and create a unit test project for this. Now we do have a unit test project already uh, over here on the right side, but I want to show you how you would create a brand new one. So let me just right click on the solution. So add new project. And in this case, you're going to be looking for X unit, right? So X unit ID here, make sure you pick the one for C sharp. So this is the one for C sharp X unit test project. Click on next. And just like we did before, you may want to name this with a reference to the actual class library they're going to be testing. So in this case, it's going to be game library dot unit tests. But since we already have that one, let's just add a suffix here, let's say dot VS. So let's click on next. And in this case, I am using dot net seven. So I'll pick that one there. But true to be said, it really doesn't matter. And nothing in this course really has to do with dot net seven. So you could be using dot net six, dot net five, or even dot net eight, and this would work the same way. So I'll click on create. And just like I did before, it has created our unit test project right here. Here's our unit test project. And we have our unit test class right there. Okay, and of course the process from here is really the same as you would do for with any other C sharp project for creating your classes and, and your code. So I'm not going to keep going with with this uh, one project here. In fact, I'm going to just collapse that, and I'm going to go back into our game library that unit test where we do have our treasure chest can open test already, right? So here's the unit test class that we've been working on, and what I want to show you now is how to run this unit test in Visual Studio. What I probably want to do is to open the test explorer. Let's go into test right here, just go into test and open up this one here, this option that says test explorer. Okay, so that's open it, going to open the test explorer. The test explorer may open like this, like right here at, at the top of your environment. So what you can do is just pin it in the on the left like this. Okay, so that is easier to see. And let me actually get rid of this other test project because we're not going to be using it. So I'm going to remove that. Okay, so it is gone. And then on the left side, what you can see is that it has already discovered our set of tests. In this case, just can open test. And of course, to run this test, all you have to do is just right click there. So you click on run, and that is going to go ahead and run your test. As you can see, it was pretty fast, just like in VS Code. You have your passing result. If you wanted, of course, you can just right click in the specific test or in the test class, and then you can say run tests in this menu, and that's going to be, have the same effect of running your test. So yeah, very straightforward to debug the test in a similar way that I would did as we did in VS Code. All you have to do is just put your breakpoint right there and you can either right click on the test that you want to debug right there and just click on debug or you can right click on the test method and just click on where it says debug tests. So click there. That's going to go ahead and start the debug session. You can see we are right here. You can go ahead and start going into the code. So I'll do step into. So now we are in the constructor of the treasure chest class. We can see the value. It is locked, right? We keep moving forward. We can go in into the can open method and we can see how the test goes across it, right? So it is locked is true. Has key is true. It evaluates to false. We're going to be returning true. Yeah, we assert that true is true. And then we just continue until the test has complete. And so that will be the debug session inside Visual Studio. So like I said, if you prefer, you can continue the course by using just a Visual Studio. That would work just fine. And as you can see, this is Visual Studio Community, 22 Community. It will work just fine. But for the rest of the course, I'll be actually using VS Code. But regardless, you should be fine following along. 
As you start having more and more unit tests, you want to have a quick way to identify one of your tests in what's going to become really a sea of hundreds of unit tests that's only going to get bigger. And also you want to have a quick way to identify what is failing in the system when, when one of these test cases is failing. So for that, people have come up with a series of patterns for naming your unit tests. And here I'm going to show you one that has been working pretty well for me and is not definitive, it is not absolute, but it's something that, like I said, is, has been working pretty well for me. The naming pattern that I'm going to be using follows this convention. So it is, I'm going to just put it as a comment here. So method name, state, under test, and expected behavior. Let's look at our current unit test here, which is named right now just can open test. So how would we rephrase this name into that naming pattern? It would be method name is can open. Then what would be the state under test? So if we look at the test here, we can see is that the current state is that we are saying that the treasure chest is locked, right? Because we're seeing true here. And also when we invoke the can open method, we are saying that has key is true. So the chest is locked and we do have a key. For the state under test, we can say the following. We can say chest is locked and has key. And finally, the expected behavior. So what should happen if we create an instance of treasure chest saying that it is locked, so the chest is locked, and we invoke the can open method with a key because we have a key. Right? So in that case, as we know, the method should return true. So the expected behavior is going to say returns true. Yeah, so that's, that's where it is. So once again, method name can open, state under test, chest is locked, and the caller has a key. Expected behavior returns true. As you can see, this name gives you a very nice way to quickly tell what this test method is about, even before you have to start looking at the implementation of the test method, which that's going to be super handy as you start having way more, more, more unit tests in your test suite. Now let's go ahead and build our test project so we can see how this new naming looks like in the test view. So let me just open my explorer here. Let's right click on game library unit tests, build, right? And then after it builds, what we can do is just go into our test view here and here we're going to be able to see the actual naming of the test in the test view. Now I think I have too much zoom here so let me just zoom out a little bit so we can see better right there and let me collapse my terminal too. Let me expand this a little, a little bit and as you can see now in our tree view we can see that we have this test for the can open method when the chest is locked and has key and it should return true. So as you start having more and more variations of this can open method for instance when the chest is not locked or when the user does not have a key so those variations are going to start showing up here in the tree and it's going to be very easy to tell what each, each test is about even before we start jumping into the test. It's going to be even more useful as these test cases start failing and we need to identify what exactly is wrong in the system. One really good practice that you can follow when writing your unit tests is to clearly differentiate the parts of the test because that makes it much easier to read, to read the body of a test, especially as it becomes a little bit more complicated. And that way, when others look at your test, they can quickly tell what's going on in the test and what's its purpose. So for this, we can use what is known as a triple A pattern. So triple A stands for arrange, act, and assert. And I didn't mention it before, but we have been actually following that pattern in this test case, but now let's make it very explicit. So let me actually scroll down a little bit so we can see better. And so the first part is arrange, right? So arrange. So this is a section here where we're going to prepare the scenario for whatever we're going to be testing. In this case, it is very simple. All we have to do is just create an instance of treasure chest. But as your test become much more complicated, you're going to be doing a lot of work in the arrange section before you can actually invoke the unit that you're going to be testing. Now, the second part, which is going to be over here, is known as act, right? So the act section is where you invoke that unit that you want to verify. In our case, that unit is the can open method. So in act, it should be usually just one line where you just invoke that method. And most of the time you should be receiving some sort of result that you later are going to be using to verify if things succeeded. So that is act. And finally, we go into the a search section. And so this is the place where you're going to verify that your expectations about the unit under the scenario that has been specified for this test are correct. If we invoke can open with true, when we created the treasure chest also with true because the chest is locked, then the result should be true, right? So that's the assert section. So it doesn't matter how big your unit test is, which by the way, it shouldn't be really big, but it doesn't matter if it is big or if it is small, it doesn't matter what exactly you're testing, you should always be following this specific structure. 
and you're going to see me following this same structure across this entire course. Now, one other thing that can be very handy as you work with the body of a unit test is to also clearly state what is the system under test or the subject under test. And that is the, the one object on which you are applying your verifications, right? The thing that you're testing. So in this case, that will be our treasure chest. This one here is what we know as the subject or system under test. So because of that, it is a good practice to name that variable with the SUT letters. So I'm going to rename this as SUT, right? So that way, whenever you come back into this test, you can clearly tell this one here, SUT, this is the thing upon which I'm going to be performing my test, right? So SUT, that can open in this case. So once again, as the test cases become a little bit more complicated, a little bit bigger, you can always tell by just following this convention that, okay, so this is the one thing that I'm going to be doing the verifications on, right? So that's the really important thing that I want to verify in this test case. So yeah, try to follow these conventions in your unit test. They are going to prove to be very, very useful and I'm pretty sure your teammates are going to really appreciate it. We want to make sure that we cover all of the scenarios for the unit that we are testing. So here what we're going to do is just to add a few more test cases to have a complete test suite. As you remember, this one test here is verifying that the, of course, we are always verifying the can open method, but in this case, it is when the chest is locked and has a key and it should return true. So let's say now that we want to verify the case where the chest is locked, but we do not have a key. The caller does not have a key. So we're going to write that method now. So public void. So this is can open. Chest is locked and has no key. So that's a state under test. What is expected behavior in that case? Well, if the chest is locked and there's no key, then that should return false, right? It is not possible to open the chest if it is locked and we don't have a key. Make sure that you always add this fact attribute there so that this is actually a test case. So let's go ahead and define our sections. So arrange, act, and assert. All right, let me scroll down right there. So just like in the previous test, bar sut equals new sure chest, and then chest is locked, so we're going to say true. All right, so that's our range. Then for our act, we're going to say var result equals sut dot can open. But in this case, we don't have a key. So we're going to say false. Finally, in the assert section, we're going to say assert dot false and then the result. So that should cover that second case. And now we need to test also what happens if the chest is not locked, right? It is unlocked. What would happen in that case? So let's go ahead and write a new unit test. And for this, I'm going to actually just copy this one for now to save a little bit of time. So let me copy that down here. It's going to be our new unit test. And this case is going to be can open, chest is unlocked and has, in this case, we're going to say has key. So what should happen if the chest is unlocked and we have a key? Well, it doesn't really matter if we have a key or not. It should all just return true, right? Because the chest is unlocked. So it returns true. Now the arrange section changes a little bit because now we have to say that the chest is not locked. So we're going to say false. Then when we, in the act section, when we invoke can open, we should say true, right? Because we are providing a key. And then the expectation is that this will be true. So that will cover that case. And then the last case is going to be, well, the chest is unlocked and we don't have a key. So let me go, just go ahead and copy this one once again for that last unit test down here. So can open, chest is unlocked and has no key, All right? So the chest is unlocked and then we're going to say false here for can open. And then the result should still be, should still be true right? Because it doesn't matter if we have a key or not, the chest is unlocked, so we should be able to open the chest. So with that in place, let's go ahead and build our test project. And I'm just going to do Ctrl Shift B to quickly build the entire solution. All right. So that's going to make it so that all new test cases are discovered. So as you can see, we have the symbol right there that allows us to run the test. And if we go to the test view, we can see all of our unit tests right here, right? This is the, the list of tests. And so I'm going to click up here right there so that uh, I can just run all the unit tests right away. So I'm going to click on that. So that's going to kick off the execution of the tests. And in just one or two seconds, yeah, there it is. We now have our results. So let me collapse this and let me expand this a little bit. Let me once again reduce the zoom a little bit so we can see better. 
there. Now you can see that we have all the, the scenarios for the can open method right there. For the different scenarios, so chess is locked and has key, locked and has no key, unlocked has key, and unlocked and has no key, and then the expected behaviors for each of those ones. And in this case, all of the scenarios have passed, and we should have covered all of the different scenarios for can open. If we go back to can open, now we can see that we have covered everything that could be done across this one method. The main purpose of having unit test suite is so that it can help us catch regressions as we are working in our product code. But how does that actually look like? So let's do a quick example to understand this better. So here we are in our Treasure Chess class. And as we know so far, we've been working on this can open method right here. So let's say that somebody comes and looks at this method and says, you know what, I think I can improve this method here by not having to have this negative condition over here, this not has key. I don't like it very much. So the one is to just invert the condition here. So what I want to say is that if is locked and has a key, then it should just return true, right? Because if the chest is locked and I have a key, I should be able to return true. And then otherwise I'll just return false. And I have not talked this through very well, but I think it should look just fine, right? And so of course the key and I will notice that there's a problem with this code here, but we don't have to think too much about that at this point because we do have a unit test suite that is covering every single scenario related to this one uh, unit, right? This can open method. So what we can do now is go ahead and just build our solution. So I just did Ctrl Shift B to build the solution. I'm going to go back into my unit test suite and I'm going to rerun all the tests. So I'm just going to click up here in run tests, I do that. And let's see if I did something bad to our test suite. So indeed I did. We have, as you can see, and it signals it here, there are two tests that are failing and we can see those two tests right here, right? These two tests are failing. So which tests are there? So let's, let's do this. Let's close the terminal. And if we hop over those, we can see that we are failing on chess is unlocked and has key returns true and chess is unlocked and has no key returns true which does make sense because now that we think about it, so if we close this and we go back to our code, what we did with this change is say that, well, you know what? Whenever the chest is not locked, we are going to be returning false, right? So we were only thinking about the case where we have a key and the chest is locked. Yes, it has to return true. But what if it's not locked? Well, if it's not locked, it should always just return true, right? It doesn't make sense to, to return false in that case. So by making this change, we have introduced a regression into the code. Thanks to our unit test suite over here, we were able to quickly catch that regression, right? And we didn't have to run the entire application if there was an entire application to catch this. We were able to quickly catch that. And of course, we are able to quickly fix this and verify the fix very quickly, right? So all I'm going to do, of course, here is just do a little bit of a revert. So revert this, revert that, revert that. And now I can go ahead and rerun my tests right so we run my test in and in just a few milliseconds i should be able to be able to tell so yeah we are go we're back into a good shape and so that is really the power of having good unit test suite when you have covered all the cases for your important business rules in your application so one of the cool things about having a good unit test suite is that it allows you to refactor with confidence, right? Because at some point your code base is going to grow bigger and you may want to refactor the code so that it becomes simpler or that it is easier to maintain or perhaps to even enable some new features that are upcoming, right? So how can unit testing help you with this? Well, let's see. We're back in our tertiary chess class and then we are in our can open method right here, right? So remember that we have this method here, but it turns to be, I mean, it's working fine, but it turns to be that we can actually do all these checks in just one line, right? So I bet you already identify how to do this in one line. If you don't, what we can do is just get the help a little bit of this light bulb over here so that we can simplify this check. So I'm going to click on that light bulb and then I'm going to just use the refactoring that says simplify check, right? So simplify check, I'll click on that. And it turns out that all we have to do is do this, right? The method can open should return true if the chest is not locked, as it says here. So if the chest is not locked or if the caller has a key, he has a key, then it should also return true because we absolutely can open the chest if it is not locked or if the caller has a key, right? That, that's all we need in this method. Now, if we did not have a unit test suite for this method, we might be a little bit concerned, right? So would this break the behavior of anybody that's taking advantage of this method or not? So I wouldn't know, but now we have our test suite, right? So we have a complete test suite here that verifies every possible scenario. This, this test suite doesn't really know exactly how the method works inside and it doesn't need to know, but it knows what, what are the expectations of the method, right? So if we now go back into our testing explorer, right? And we rerun our test. I'm going to just click here to rerun all of the tests. 
And if we did everything properly, yeah, as you can see, everything is still passing, right? It is all passing because we were able to refactor the code with confidence because the test suite is covering all of the scenarios. I think this is one of the biggest benefits of having a good test suite that covers all the scenarios because, of course, eventually you need to pay your, your tech debt, right? And you want to start simplifying your code, do better maintenance, enable features and stuff like that. And only having a good unit test suite is how you are able to, to do all of this. To dive deeper into the world of unit testing with C-Sharp, I invite you to check out my full course, C-Sharp Unit Testing Essentials, where I cover many other fundamental topics like how to avoid code duplication with X-Unit parameterized tests, how to write better assertions with a powerful Fluent Assertions library, and how to isolate code for faster and more reliable unit tests with nSubstitute and mock. If you're interested, please check out the link in the video description to get all the details. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.